welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology and in this video lecture I am going to tell you how to solve restriction map problems and how to do restriction mapping you know restriction mapping is a very interesting way to find out uh, like normally why it's done is simply to understand where different restriction enzymes will cleave a DNA it's also important to find out a sequence of the DNA in sometimes and uh, there are some problems that are asked in different competitive exams giving you the list or uh, you can say a table of different restriction enzymes and the digestion that they are doing at the end for example in this uh, particular question they give you a table with two separate restriction enzyme digestion normally in exam they give you two to maximum three restriction enzymes most of the time two restriction enzymes but the number of fragments that they can increase to increase the complexity of the question this is a simpler question uh, after solving this we'll also solve another a little bigger fragment question so in this case you see it's only two three fragments so if we treat a DNA with eco R1 let's say the DNA is linear they already mentioned you that the DNA is linear it's treated with eco R1 providing two separate fragments 1 3 kb 1 3.5 kb that means eco R1 cleaves once to the DNA because you remember for a linear DNA if you cleave it once two fragments are produced if you cleave it twice three fragments will be produced that is the idea same thing for hind 2 enzyme it also producing two fragments that means the cleavage site for hind 2 is also one now if you treat the dna with both eco r1 and hind 2 there are three fragments generated okay so now how to solve this type of problems although this is really easy there are two approaches that you can always use to solve the first thing that you should check is the total length and when you add up the fragments you will always end up in the total length always like 3.3.5 3 plus 3.5 give you 6.5 2 plus 4.5 is also 6.5 2 plus 1 plus 3.5 is also 6.5 now what you need to understand is take any of this restriction enzyme and the fragments try to compare this fragment with the double cut so if you look at here you'll always find out compositions from the double cut that will give a rise to any of this single cut fragments because try to understand one thing when you treat it only eco, eco r1 you'll generate two fragments when you treat it with hint 2 generates two fragments but when you treat it with both you generate three fragments so whenever we're treating a same dna with multiple restriction endonucleases you'll generate even more fragments so what we know if we take all those lowest fragments uh, lowest length fragments and add them together you will always end up in fragments generated by a single cleavage that is the idea and this is the approach that we utilize to solve although this problem can be solved by looking at this question in mouth without drawing anything but we'll go with the rule and what is the rule the rule is to mark the name for all the fragments that you get from the two separate enzyme cut so in this case let's say this is a this is b this is c a means 2 kb b means 1 kb c means 3.5 kb now what we are going to do for eco r1 so let's write eco r1 we are going to com compose the fragments and also hint to we are going to find the fragments so what fragments that we'll get here let's say eco r1 one is 3 kb so 3 kb can be divided into 1 2 kb and 1 1 kb right so it will be a 2 kb plus b 1 kb total 3 kb done the other fragment 3.5 kb can also be divided into what only c okay on the other hand for hint 2 we can only take that a is 2 kb hint 2 is also 2 kb so 2 kb equals to a now 4.5 kb can be divided into 1 kb plus 3.5 kb so 1 kb means b 3.5 kb means c so what we can say from here is we start with a and then what we have a plus b write it like this then we have b plus c so the way to write it is to find overlapping regions try to understand so start with a done then a plus b right next to a will be positioned right next to each other then b plus c because b will be positioned 
right next to each other then last c done so the total sequence here will be a fragment then b fragment then c fragment so b means 1 kb fragment so simply let me draw this graph a little better way so simply we can write here that the a fragment a fragment means 2 kb fragments this is a fragment then b fragment 1 and then c fragment that is 3.5 so now we know two fragments is generated by hin2 so this is the position for hin2 and 3.5 is generated by eco r1 so this is the fragment generated by eco r1 so now try to understand if you cleave only with eco r1 you divide it from here 1 3.5 and 1 3 that's what you got correct if you treat it with hint 2 you'll get 1 2 and 1 4.5 got it so you see this become really easier and actually you may say why I'm complicating stuff you can e even easily see this that yes uh, there is somewhere if you look at here this 4.5 kb is somehow divided into 1 and 1 3.5 so we know that in this particular cleave there is some cleavage point present by hint 2 right in the middle of eco r1 side it becomes easier but why I am going by this rule you will see in a moment the next question that we are going to solve if you utilize the simple common method to solve, you will fail. But if you utilize this method, it will be really fast and easy way to solve. Because in this question, they only give you three separate fragments while treating with two restriction enzymes. But they may give you six, seven, eight, nine different fragments. So it will be really difficult uh, to just put those uh, different fragments in the list. Okay. So let's let's look at the next question here. Now here we go with the second example. And as I told you earlier the questions become a little complicated when they provide you more fragments with restriction enzyme this problem is also where we use two separate restriction enzymes to cleave let's say here denoted by b and by k and the third one is when we use b and k both together and the number of fragments generated when you use b and k both together is really quite high so normally if you add those fragment numbers together 5.1 5.1 10.5 plus 0.5 11 so total comes down to 14 same thing here 6.5 1.8 5.7 it will also give you 14 so they will always end up in 14 but the question is you need to construct the map and they already told you this is a circular DNA so this is a plasmid DNA and you need to construct the map of the plasmid DNA for a linear DNA it's not a difficult part to draw a map because you know uh, the terminal site can be left or right that doesn't matter but for in case of a circular DNA there is no terminal site it's all cyclized right circle so what we do in this case uh, to construct the restriction map here is also utilizing the same rule that we used earlier that's why I told you th to follow the rule always so what rule we, we will use this will be A this will be B this will be C this will be D this will be E this will be F so there are six separate fragments and now what we go do will go for B the fragments that are produced and we'll also go for K the fragments that are produced so for B what we know 5.1 5.1 KB that this is the first fragment equals to which fragment will provide us uh, the composition of 5.1 KB that's what we need to figure out and if you look at here the only way to get 5.1 KB is 1.9 added to 3.2 so a and e a plus e okay now the second fragment 5.4 equals to which one will give us 5.4 you see 4.8 plus 0 0.8 b plus c right Now 3.5 which will give us 3.5 1 and 2.5 so D and F done so done this for restriction enzyme B now we'll do this for restriction enzyme K so the values that we'll do here 6.5 equals to 
how you divide 6.5? 6.5 will be say 4.6 to 1 is not going to give us 6.5 I think uh, 1.9 with it's not also going to give us I think 1.9 with 4.6 this is going to give us 6.5 so a plus b now the second part 1.8 so 1.8 how will you get 1 plus 0.8 so d plus c or c plus d whatever you can write will give you 1.8 and the last 5.7 last 5.7 and 5.7 means 3.2 2.5 e plus f so what we've got here is a list for B and also the list for K. Now what will you do is simply like the last time we are going to follow the overlapping segments. So start with A and remember this will always end up in A because it's a circular DNA so you need to end in, in A. So let's begin with A plus E then find out because E is at the end so we need to find out something starts with E and that is this one e plus f now you need to find something that starts with f this one f plus d now remember one thing d is there it doesn't matter whether you write it d plus f or, or f plus d so you can write it like that then something with d d plus c then something with c c plus b and the last one with something with b so b a plus b uh, i mean b plus a so now we started in A, ended up in A. So that means we organized it correctly. And every single time we are looking for it, we are trying to find an overlapping section. Always. This is why we created these fragments and named those fragments. So now at the end, what will we get? Is the sequence of, so if it's a plasmid DNA, let's draw a plasmid DNA. What will be the sequence? The sequence will be simply starting to A, then E. So the fragment let's say A, then fragment E, then fragment F, then fragment D, then fragment B, then again ultimately after B the fragment will be F. Uh, I think C is missing, D, that will be C, this will be B and this will be A. So this thing will repeat. Now where you put all the different uh, fragments because you know you know the name of this fragment now you know the name of this fragment now let's say once you know the name of all these fragments a 1.9 kb b 4.6 kb this one c 0 0.8 kb d 1 1 kb e 3.2 kb f 2.5 kb so now you put all this because you know the length of the fragment. Now the last part. How to put the name of the enzymes. Now you can easily go back here. For B cut side there will be 5.1. And what you know as a 5.1? This 1.9 plus 3.2 is going to give you 5.1 A plus E. So this is the place which is cut by B. See? B plus C. So the joint between B and C cut by B. So B and C joint is also cut by the enzyme B. D and F. So the joint between D and F is also cut by B. So D and F joint this one cut by B. Now where K cuts again let us look at here. K between A and B. A and B let us say A and B this is the point cut by K. C and D. So the joint between C and D cut by K. So C and D joint cut by K. And between E and F joint, it is also cut by K. E and F joint also cut by K. So now you can easily put not only the length of the DNA fragments, but also the positions where all B and K enzymes cleaved. So it, if it seems confusing, I will recommend you to watch this video at least twice. 
rewind the video watch it at least twice to get to know what I am doing at the end because at the end we are simply looking at this fragments we've drawn the fragments we've drawn the graph then when you need to put the values we simply look for here between where we are going to get the fragment whenever we get the fragment between a and e b and c and d and f b cuts between a and b c and d and e and f k cuts that's what you need to put it here and that's how you'll get the answer it becomes really easy and if you practice this question really well then you can answer it within two to three minutes that's fast that's how fast you can answer this question it's not going to create much trouble so this is the trick that you can utilize to answer any uh, gene mapping question any most of the cases any restriction mapping question that they can ask you in the in the exam okay so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that thank you